It's known as the heart of Australia. But for the past 18 months, a coronial inquest has exposed the stark divisions in the harsh and beautiful Red Centre. More than 70 witnesses have fronted the Alice Springs Coroner's Court to dissect a fatal police shooting that rocked the Northern Territory. The man who pulled the trigger is the last. Morning, Mr Rolf. How are you feeling about giving evidence today? Zachary Rolf was acquitted of all criminal charges over the shooting of Kuman J Walker. But the inquest has a broader scope, raising fresh questions about the culture within the NT police force and examining the officers' past conduct. For Samara Fernandez-Brown, the process is a chance to find answers about the circumstances of her cousin's death. From Zachary Rolfe, I think all we've ever asked for is the real story, and I hope that he's able to give that. It was in the remote community of Yundamu, three hours from Alice Springs, where an attempt to arrest Kuman J Walker for breaching a court order and assaulting police ended in his death. Zachary Rolfe shot the 19-year-old three times after being stabbed with a pair of scissors. A court later found the officer was acting in self-defence. Law professor Thalia Anthony has been following the case. We have seen in the inquest um, a huge amount of evidence come to the fore that wasn't available in the trial. And um, the community and the coroner certainly want Rolf to answer these new accusations and this new evidence. This footage from Mr Rolf's own body-worn camera in 2019 is among new evidence played to the court. It shows him pushing two Indigenous men who appear to be intoxicated, fighting in an Alice Springs park. Stay on the ground. Around six minutes later, he tells a fellow officer... I'd like to give him an infringement just to justify the use of force. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll give them both an infringement. On the stand, Mr Rolfe admitted... I think there are many ways, looking back in hindsight, how you can handle a situation better. Telling the court it was resolved extremely efficiently and quickly, adding... And it may not look good, but pushing two men onto soft grass is a very low-level use of force and it can be confronting for people who are not used to confronting violence on a daily basis. Later in the muster room, Mr Rolfe watches the footage back, filming it on his phone, as he provides commentary to fellow officers. Get him, boys. Boots. Oh, boots. <laughs> <laughs> and your reason for filming it on your phone was for a laugh, to play it back later on, wasn't it? Yes, it was. What do you think about that conduct? Yeah, it's completely unprofessional and I have no excuse for that. Body-worn footage of several other incidents involving Mr Rolfe have been played to the court, including this 2018 arrest of a 14-year-old boy who had breached his bail conditions, hiding in a wheelie bin. The coroner heard the former officer was involved in 46 use of force incidents during his three year stint in Alice Springs. Mr. Rolfe said that was not a high number given he'd been called to more than 3,000 jobs in that time, pointing to internal investigations which found his use of force was not excessive. Do you accept that you had developed a bad attitude towards Aboriginal people accused of crime? No. Do you accept that you had developed a bad attitude? at least Aboriginal men who you were arresting, for alleged criminal offences? No. Mr Rolfe was also questioned about text messages shown to the court in which he used racial slurs. The fact that I have, for example, said coon in my messages, the fact that that's been made public, which would have caused hurt to a number of people, especially kids, who should have been able to trust the police force, like that kills me, so I'm sorry for that. Mr Rolfe, who has since been dismissed from the police for publishing an open letter about the inquest online, told the court racist language is used everywhere in the NT police. Telling the coroner a so-called Aboriginal-only section of an Alice Springs pub was widely referred to by local police as the animal bar. 
And a police tactical response unit handed out a Coon of the Year award where... Staff would make the recipient dress up in a toga and they would give him a wooden club with some nails in the end. Senior members of the unit filed affidavits with the coroner today, saying while there was an award for caveman-type behaviour, it was called the Nugada Award, a made-up word with no known Indigenous connotations. It has since been renamed. What's been really startling about this inquest is if you look at the evidence that's been brought forward from Walker's family, from the community, from government, police and outside experts, is that they've collectively painted a picture of systemic racism in the police force. Mr Rolfe's evidence this week ignited tensions outside the court and prompted a swift response from NT police in Darwin. That's his evidence. Uh, that's the events he's um, giving to the court in the process. Um, when I go to Alice Springs and the other stations around the Territory, I do not see those behaviours, I do not hear those comments. I think racism in any organisation is unacceptable. Uh, there will be an investigation, as the Commissioner has highlighted, led by the Deputy Commissioner and other agencies. Hearings are due to finish this week, the end of a gruelling chapter. We're feeling extremely burnt out and exhausted. I just think Kumanjia needs to be remembered as somebody that is extremely loved and extremely missed and that had a life that was worth living.